Hello, Year 10. Welcome to this lesson, um, which is on English language paper two and helping you improve your skills. So this is Olida Equiano. He was eight years old when he was um, turned into a slave. Really interesting story and is the first source that we're looking at today. In 1786, he had enough money saved up over his many years of being a slave that he was actually able to buy his own freedom. And he became involved in the movement within London to abolish slavery. In fact, he published a book, and it's this book that we're having a look at an extract from today. It was published in 1789, and it was really effective because it was very, um, it expressed the grim reality of the slave trade and what it was actually like um, for the slaves. He died in that same year in 1789, and slavery was finally abolished in the United Kingdom and its colon colonies in 1807. So first bit of today's lesson after you're due now is to answer question one. So question run, remember, tells you which lines, and to make it easy for you, I've put the lines here for you, and then you choose four statements that are true. Now you can fill them in here, or if you want to, you could just highlight them and turn them a different color, whatever is easiest for you. You shouldn't take more than four minutes to answer this question. So today I'm actually going to start a timer for you and give you that four minutes. You should be working on answering this question. Okay, about 90 seconds left. And about 30 seconds.
Okay, so let's have a look at the answers. So if you would purple pen this place, you should have selected A, B, C, and F as the correct answers. Okay, question number two, task number two. So task number two is where it says refer, refer to both sources, source A and source B, write a summary of the similarities. This one is asking for similarities between the way African and Polish slaves are treated. So what we're gonna to do to plan for this is you need two different examples of how they're treated in each source. So let's have a look at this and then you can fill in your own copies. So the first thing that I notice is in that source A, um, you have, they were treated without any sort of consideration for their emotions. One quotation from that is soon converted into terror when I was carried on board, I was immediately handled and tossed. And we can infer that he's treated like an object that does not have emotions. Now in source B, also treated the same way, quotation for that is brutality was commonplace. And we can infer that vulnerable people were treated horribly. So just pause the video now and make sure that you copy down these examples. Okay, welcome back. Just a reminder of the frame for question number two is where you write about source A, make a statement, use a quotation, use an inference, another quotation and an inference. And then for paragraph two, you write about source B. So as this one is asking us for similarities, we would start off similarly, the writer source B portrays, and then use the same format, and then make sure that you compare back to source A. So if you'd like a little bit of a stretch and challenge today, feel free to write in your answer here. Now, task three, question three, only will only ask you about one source, and this one's asking you about source A. How does Olada Ikwano use language to convey his thoughts and feelings about, and then I've highlighted the topic, conditions on the slave ship? So a reminder about how you prepare to answer this question. You highlight the focus of the question. You reread the lines. Sometimes they'll ask you to um, look at only certain lines. And then you come up with two to three words. What's the overall impression the writer wants you to have about conditions on the slave ship? So I've come up with these three, if you'd write these down. The conditions were unhealthy, they were quite violent, and they were horrific. Now, the next bit I've not done for you, so you're going to have to do this bit on your own. This bit is all about how the conditions were unhealthy. So you need to find true quotations from the source that shows that the conditions were unhealthy. Now you already have one of them because we talked about up here, um, how he was flogged, you could use that. Or have a look at, here we go, let's have a quick look at the source. Um, especially in this paragraph here that begins at last, has quite a few examples of the environment that they were forced to live in and how they were unhealthy. So I'm sure you'll be able to find some quotations there. This paragraph then will focus on the violent conditions. So you'll need to find two quotations in source A that mentions violence. And then the third paragraph would focus on horrific, kind of more of a general word that you can use lots of different quotations for. So again, you'll pause the video and work on finding two quotations for each paragraph. So a total of six quotations. Then finally, question four. Question four asks you to write about both sources. Compare how the writers present similar perspectives on slavery. Now, sometimes the in the exam, they will ask you for different perspectives. So it's important that you read the question really carefully. Today, though, we're looking at similar perspectives. So I've done this for you. So you can just pause the video and copy in the answers. At the beginning of the source, of source A, there's a real fear of the unknown. Whereas in source B, there's also this idea of fear because they preyed on those that were vulnerable. 
And then what you would need to do is find, I'm not asking you to do this today, but what you would need to do is then find a quotation to prove both of those points. In the middle of the source, Aquano expresses his horror at how he and how other people are being treated. And the same for source B, horrified by the treatment of the people. And then at the end of the sources, at the end of the source A, Equiano expresses his anger about the slave trade and its effects. And at the end of source B, the writer is very clear in that the, the victims will never fully recover, but at least the perpetrators are in jail, which of course is a difference to the slave trade article. Okay, and then again, if you wanna stretch and challenge yourself or for a bit of revision, you um, have the opportunity here to write out those paragraphs. Okay, hope that helped.